10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Hello everybody. I hope everyone is doing well. This is Michael Voss, Dragon of the Southern Tier. I'm here with you at the No Sound Bites Allowed podcast. I hope everyone is doing exceptionally well. I know it's a little bit hectic here today. It's uh, been a busy day for me and I think for everyone. I hope everyone is warm. I know the weather is crazy out there. It is brutally cold. But I thank you for taking a few moments to be here with me. And the rest of you, I I enjoy being here with you guys. You make it all worthwhile. That's why I do this week after week, day after day. So I want to thank you all for that. Whoops. And uh, let's go over why I'm all I'm here with you today. Because as we all know, last week, uh, Gillette had, well, uh, Gillette came out with what would be an attack on men. Assuming that every man out there is some kind of horrible beast, that we are the worst of the worst of creatures that exist on the face of the earth. I mean, that's basically what they said. We're evil, racist, evil, rapist, pigs. That's what Gillette thinks of men. And obviously, I'm no longer buying any of their products. And for people who don't know, Procter & Gamble is the parent company, and I'm not buying their goods as much as possible as well. Uh, their stock is P and G or PG on the New York Stock Exchange, and I'm going to avoid them as much as possible. I don't support people who tell me that I am intrinsically evil because I was born. I don't think anyone should. And in fact, that said as much in my post, uh, I did a video on this a podcast yesterday. You can see it on YouTube as well. And uh, going over just those very thoughts. But right after I did that, Right after I made that commentary, uh, that's when we saw that came what came out today, in fact. And there is, of course, I love my sound effects. Newsflash. Newsflash. That's right. There was a newsflash that just came out. There was a response video that I think was exceptional. The name of the company is eGuard Watches, and I'm going to play part of it here. I can only go about 30 seconds just because of YouTube restrictions, but I do want to play this for you so that you get to see an idea of what I'm talking about here. Uh, and Pete and Gillette, you should be ashamed. Shame on you, Procter & Gamble. Shame on you, Gillette. This is what you should have said. What is a man? Is a man brave? Is a man a hero? Is a man, is a man a protector? All right, folks. As I said, I want to play more of that. I think it's an incredible video. I think it's incredibly powerful in what it says. Again, that's by Egard uh, Watches, and that's spelled E-G-A-R-D Watches. You can see that on YouTube. I do suggest it. And just from what we saw and just that little clip that we saw there, just the beginning, it's only a two minute long commercial, but I think it's infinitely better and stronger than anything that was said by uh, when we heard from Gillette. And so I want to hear what other people are thinking of this, because I think it's, it's insane. I think it was absolutely insane uh, what Gillette had said. But it also made me think, what in the world is Gillette talking about when we hear toxic masculinity? Obviously, what Gillette is thinking and what Egard watches are thinking, two different things. And by the way, I, I haven't been paid by Egard watches. I haven't been paid by Gillette. I haven't been paid by anyone. Um, I've loved sponsors, but they're, none of them are my sponsors. This is just me speaking. So I'm thinking, what is toxic masculinity? I mean, I was addressing it yesterday. 
We've heard a lot of people talking about this, but you know what's the one thing I don't hear a whole lot of? What in the world do people mean when they say, what is toxic masculinity? Obviously, EGARD is looking at things like I do. Men are there very often to be protectors, are there to be strong fathers and figures, our neighbors, uh, people we can rely on, people who do difficult jobs and take on difficult risks, not because they're the only ones who can do it, but because they do do it. And historically, we do it more often. Not that women can't do it, that we just tend to do it more often. We are genetically different. We're built differently, so we tend to do things differently. Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. It's a book. Look it up. It makes a lot of sense. It was written in the 70s. It seems no one's been there since then to read that. So it made me wonder, especially once I saw the eGuard watches and it motivated me to come out and make this comment with you all. Uh, I wanted to go and I had to say to myself, so what is it? Well, actually, I looked it up. And the only place I can really find a definition about this is with the, uh, is over at the, uh, Urban Dictionary. And the Urban Dictionary starts off saying that this is a social science term. Well, that doesn't mean much. All that means is that someone in college made up the term. It doesn't have a real relevance. And that this term is talking about an exaggerated masculine trait. Okay, and those traits would be being violent, being unemotional, being sexually aggressive. And you know what I think when I hear that? I'm thinking of a movie. Okay, when I hear someone talking, so if, if that's the definition, these exaggerated traits, then we're talking about people who are looking at movies. That somehow I am the equivalent of John McClane or the Terminator or Captain America. I don't know, Black Panther. That we're somehow supposed to be one of these cartoonish, over-the-top movie characters. We're not. We're men. We're real people. You know, if anything, closer to glass. If you want to go into a movie, we're closer to glass than we are than, uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger in these movies. It's not real. And the definition by which we are being judged by Gillette and Procter and & Gamble and those who denounce toxic masculinity when they're actually talking about men just being human beings, when they're talking about negative traits that all human beings, some women, some men, everyone has it. Well, then I had to think, well, what, what, has, what else is they, are they defining it with? And they define it with toxic masculinity as an interaction between men and women always has to be a competitive and not about cooperation. Okay, before we go further, let me answer that. And I'm going to bring that back up on the screen so I can answer this. It's interactions between men and women always have to be a competition. Let me ask you, in the current society, in current culture, look at Hollywood, look at TV, look at politics. Who's being the competitive person? That's women. We see women using this trait. This is what we're being introduced into our society, are women being competitive at all levels. And in fact, being encouraged to be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a man, whether it's in a movie, which we've seen over and over again. Think of the Alien movies, which did it well, which did it well. But then look at Ray in the Star Wars, the latest versions of that. Uh, look at all the failed movies that have come out recently, the Ghostbusters movie, where we're told women have to be in a constant competition and that, more importantly, men have to be on a lower level, that they're idiots. This, uh, Ghostbusters movie is a great example. The Last Jedi is another great example. Men have to be absolute idiots and women have to be Mary Sue characters and they're constantly in, com in conflict. Look at the interactions between uh, Nancy Pelosi and Donald Trump. Look at Senator Kamala Harris. Uh, listen, um, Senator Hirono uh, out of Alaska, no, excuse me, Hawaii. These are all individuals who are saying that men need to shut up, that men don't have a voice, that they have the answers. This is women who are in competition, not the men. The toxicity isn't here in the average man. 
but we are seeing this promoted as the toxicity women should take on. That's a problem for a society. I don't care who's being toxic. If you're promoting toxic actions, it doesn't matter if the gender is male or female or transgender or whatever. It's a problem. And we have to address that. What else they say is toxic masculinity? Well, men can never truly understand women and women uh, can never just, uh, men and women can never just be friends. Well, you know, like I said before, there's been books written about this for longer than I've been alive and I've been alive for 50 years. No, men do not completely understand women. Women do not completely understand men. That is a fact. Come on, let's get real. We have very different ways of looking at the world. We have very different physiques and, and we're built genetically very differently and we have different roles genetically just like every other creature on the planet so yeah we're going to be very different we're going to see things differently as for not being able to have interactions that are not sexual come on that does that's just stupid that's are we in high school that's just such a thing and i want to do say hello and thank you to i see uh love to be love to text is here and uh here is a good video to Count of the hip hypocrisy of the man hate in society. It's spot on. By the way, this hey Tina, how you doing? Yes, and it is a great video, and I do agree with that. And thank you for your comment there. Now I, I need to put on my glasses so I can see that better. So we know that this kind of uh, what they're trying to say here that men and women just can't be friends. Lots of men and women throughout history have been friends. You definitely can do that. And we have seen that people do have differences in understanding each other. That has nothing, that's not negative. By the way, how well do you understand the way people live in China? Or how about how people live in South America? How about the way people live in Russia? You don't always necessarily understand someone. And it's not because they're a man or a woman. Different cultures, different lives, different environments. That's normal. One of the other things about toxic ma masculinity, that real men need to be strong and showing emotion is a sign of weakness, unless it's anger, and it's okay. Again, this is a cartoonish answer. Yes, men tend to have subdued emotions. We're not highly emotional creatures. Most men, most. And most women are more emotional, most. That isn't everyone, and that isn't a rule. And... Different cultures have different ways of looking at that. So what? That doesn't make someone bad or evil or wrong, as Gillette would like us to believe, as many feminists would like us to believe. And as Egard shows, we have the capacity for emotion, but it's kind of hard to be emotional and be open when someone's attacking you. So we should keep that in mind. The idea that men can never be victims of abuse and talking about it is shameful. You know what? I agree. That is a problem in our society, in American culture, that men can't talk about these things. And we do need to combat that. I agree. But you know what? We can't really do that if, at the same time, that we're saying, well, men should be able to more, be more open about the experiences that they have and sometimes the negative ones that they've gone through. When we have someone turning around and saying, well, I'm going to attack you for that, by the way, you're evil as a male, and you deserve to be attacked, which we have seen many feminists say. So that's a problem. You can't have it both ways. You can't have people competing and attacking and blaming people for being not strong enough to defend themselves, and at the same time asking them, well, why don't you share when you can't defend yourself? Let's go on to some other stuff that they said, because it just drove me nuts to read this. Um, and one of the things is that the, the idea that real men always want sex and are ready for it at any time. Really? What movie are these guys watching? Stop watching Bond 007. This is the real world here. Men aren't always ready for sex. Yes, no more than women are always ready for sex. Some people are more sexual than others. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that everyone's running around, rutting like some kind of horny goat. That's not human nature. That's not what people do. And yes, there are some people who do, in fact, do that. Okay, that's not the majority. And those few individuals are corrected easily by just challenging them, talking with them. Very often, that's all it takes. 
And if we want to say, well, we're talking about that one small sliver of the population, maybe 1%, maybe it's 5% of the population that are acting like this, fantastic, then we can do that. We can, as a society, say, we know that there's this small sliver of people who do these things, but let's not pretend that it's everyone, that this is the norm, that it's accepted. Did you know that rape has been illegal since... I was just doing a quick search before I came here. You know, at least going back to... I stopped looking and researching this. 1769 in England. In England, before there was an America, we had... Um, being illegal, understood throughout the world that this was something that was wrong. And suddenly we act like, well, no one's ever thought of that before. No one has ever made rape wrong. Men have always thought that they could just run around and rape women. No, they didn't. No, they haven't. It's insulting for someone to try and propose that idea, to give little kids this idea that men are supposed to be acting like this or that some men have acted like this. That isn't true. There are lots of repercussions and men know better than that. And men don't believe in that. And I'll give you a great reason why I know men don't believe in that. Men have mothers and men have sisters. So, yes, we're not running around going, hey, yeah, let's go rape somebody's mom or somebody's sister because it could be yours. No, we don't agree with that. And yes, standards of rape have changed, and the way that trials are done have changed, just like most things in society, and some have gotten better, some have gotten worse. But we've understood clearly that is not right. Now, I can go on a little bit further about this, and they have some other uh, ideas that I think are absolutely insane, that uh, any idea that's somewhat feminine emasculates a guy. No, I don't really think any idea is going to emasculate it. If a guy's running around in a dress, that may emasculate him. And maybe he wants to be emasculated in that way. He wants to be seen as a woman. Fantastic. He's a cross-dresser. He's transsexual, whatever. Fantastic for him. Some men like that. But, you know, just because a guy reads poetry doesn't make him a female or emasculates him. No. No. What may emasculate a man is having someone come and attack them for being, for very much existing. And that's attacking their sense of self, like Gillette has done. That is dangerous. But to say that, oh, every man has to act in a certain way. No, no, we don't. We tend to, but then again, that's just because we're men. We are genetically in a certain way. Women tend to act a certain way too, no matter where you are in the world. But you don't have to believe me on that. Let's go to the professionals. Psychology Today. Dr. Sa'ad, uh, who has a PhD, talking about toxic uh, masculinity back in 19, uh, excuse me, 2018. And he mentions, in no culture ever studied have women repeatedly referred to mate with pear-shaped, low-status, tepid men possessing high-pitched nasal voices. In no documented culture do women's sexual fantasies revolve around granting sexual access to unemployed, unambitious men who occupy the lowest stratus of the social hierarchy. You know, I think that answers it really well. We have to be more realistic. Toxic masculinity doesn't exist. Not in the sense that it's being portrayed out there. Men aren't running around roving in roving groups trying to just rape women everywhere they are well maybe in certain parts of certain cultures in europe that were introduced there and that's a whole other thing that's political but let's be honest when we look at these lists and we take out the movie tropes the idea is that some guy is you know i don't know a uh, uh, 007 or some kind of Schwarzenegger in some kind of movie. Let's get rid of the action heroes. Let's get rid of the superheroes. Let's get rid of the thrillers and the fantasy movies. And let's actually talk about human beings. And when we talk about human beings, men and women, and we actually think about how we interact, what's more realistic, Gillette or the E-Guard? The E-Guard watch commercial. Which one? Oh, and by the way, and, and I see Tina had another comment here, and Tina says, society is trying to remove men and anything male. They've been doing this for years and have totally 
uh, ramped it up over the last couple of years. And Tina, I agree with you completely. You're absolutely right. Uh, but that doesn't mean we let them get away with it. We do not let them get away with it. But I did want to share this with everyone. I did want to give you my thoughts uh, very briefly here. I'm going to wrap this up. This is meant to be short. It's one of our speed podcasts. Do check out the No Sound Bites Allowed podcast. We normally have a Facebook Live interaction with the public on Saturdays throughout the week. We do one or two other uh, podcasts. We try and do one a day if possible. It takes about 15 minutes or thereabouts. You can always contact us. If you're looking on the screen on YouTube, you can reach us on Twitter at MVConsult. If you go over to uh, our website, MVOS.com, you can email us at info at VOSConsult.com. You can donate at our website uh, at thestreamlabs.com slash Michael Vasquez1. And we appreciate any support, even if it's dollar, 50 cents, it doesn't really matter. We thank you. Help us get to our goal for this year of $5,000 so we can get some new equipment in here. And other than that, I want to say thank you for the time that you have been here with me. I hope this makes uh, this was interesting. Do let us know your thoughts. And until the next time, we thank you and we want you to be very well. I appreciate you. Love you. Stay warm today.